Okay, everyone, welcome, welcome back. And I'm very happy to now present you maybe this today's non-technical talk. I don't want to say anything wrong, but still a very interesting talk. Everybody talks about open source. So I'm welcome Kim McMahon with, I did change the title, Parallel Paths, <laughs> Raising Puppies and Growing Your Own Open Source Project. So a welcome for Kim. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, we have a couple QR codes up there. Uh, the one next to my picture is going to go to all of my social profiles. So feel free to click on that if you want to connect with me or email me. Uh, and then the one on the right is my slides. And it will have the slide notes that I can't see. So if I miss something and you read those notes, you say, don't forget to say that. Go ahead and raise your hand. But um, so uh, I, I did this talk a month ago. And I just felt it was a real big snoozer. It was really about the non-technical needs of growing an open source project. And I was going into, you know, you need a business strategy and you need your messaging and blah, 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 all this kind of boring stuff. And then I started thinking, well, you know, there's parallels. I have this puppy and if any of you follow me at all on social media, you know that I have this puppy. I talk a lot about her. She's like on every, every, one of my, uh, every one of my shots in my social media. And I started thinking that some of the things about nurturing an open source project and making it healthy and helping it grow up to be a responsible open source project was kind of a parallel to raising this puppy and helping her be a responsible puppy in puppy land. So um, we're going we're gonna to do a comparison here. I'm going to mirror these together. And the one on the left is Cece, the chocolate lab. She's 16 months old. And she is the puppy that we're going to raise and compare to nurturing and growing an open source project. And when you think about an open source project, this is really simplified. We have governance, technical, and advocacy and community. Obviously, there's all kinds of nuances to an open source project. But for the purpose of this presentation, when you think about an open source project, you have your governance, your leadership, those type of things. You have all your technical that most of the, the things that most of you in this audience do. And then you have your advocacy and community things, your messaging your branding, going to market, your product launches, for example, that are important and that often get kind of left to the end or maybe not even done at all. And if you, the point of this talk is that we, you need to be thinking about those marketing and advocacy things because that is gonna help make your open source project more healthy. So when you think about an open source project, um, you have the, you know, the components. You got your code, you got your resourcing, your documentation, your community, and all of that's going to flow into new users, right? And, and all of these things are really, really important. And when you think about a puppy, you're going to have things like food and water. And those things are really important. And if we don't think about with a project that, you have, you, that you're spending time on community, that you're writing good documentation. You know, your, your project may, your project will have some gaps and may not be as successful. So you also, the other thing important for a puppy uh, is that, is the exercise. And that's where we're just gonna have more. We're gonna have more users, we're gonna have more contributors, we're gonna have more of a happy dog. So the first thing when um, raising a puppy or, ra or raising an open source project is to make sure that you have the strategy in place. What are your goals for the project? Like, what do you, why are you even doing this open source project? What is it trying to solve? What, what's going on out there in the technical community that's not happening that you need this open source project for? And you're gonna kind of outline and know why you're doing it you're going to have an idea of what it might be when it grows up. You're going to set those expectations. And you're also going to secure your resource commitment. So any time that you're setting a strategy for a project, you need to do all of those things, your goals, your reason, your business case, and your resource commitments. With a puppy, you know, do you want something that is small that's going to fit in your arms and you're going to get to cuddle? Or do you want something that's going to go on a hike with you? And if you don't do all those things, if you don't sit there and plan ahead, if you don't plan ahead with a puppy, you might get something that looks like this. So you really want to make sure that you've given it some thought when you're thinking about your project. Know why it is that you want to develop it. 
Technology is super cool. I get it. We all love technology. We were spending a lot of time earlier, a couple of us, trying to figure out how to get some technology working. And it is really cool, but really think about what is it going to be, what's it going to offer out, what do you want to accomplish with this project, so, which is going to help you with the best chance of success. So, and when you get it right, you got your, there's always leaders, there, you know, there are some open source projects that are just done by, you know, yourself, right? But most of the time an open source project is coming out of an organization. So when you do it and you get it right, you can have leaders that are excited and committed. You, when you're able to communicate why you're doing it, you're going to get buy-in from the extended team. And you're going to have a community that understanding why you're doing this open source project that hopefully hopefully and frankly you need them to get behind your open source project and when you get it right with a puppy you're going to have a lot of fun and you have somebody to share as many of you who know me my favorite food french fries For next thing we're going to do is we're going to describe the project we um what what's the technology what does the technology do um who is going to benefit from the technology is it the developer is it going to be the security team? Is DevOps, platform engineering? You're, like, who is going to benefit from this technology? What type of organizations are going to use it? Is it going to be, um, is it going to be like a Netflix-type organization, a big company, a big streaming service? Is it going to be a foundation that can benefit and, and make it healthy for all their other open source projects? What is that organization that is most likely to get the benefit out of the project? And then the differentiation. And it's not only differentiation from what might else be out there. The biggest differentiation you need to worry about with an open source project is the status quo. Like, well, how are people doing it now? What is that pain point they have for how they're getting this technology thing that your, your project is going to solve? How are they getting it done now? Because a rip and replace Changing anybody's mind to do something new it has to be pretty compelling. So really think about what's the difference between how you're doing it now and how you can do it in the future. So tying it back to the dog, um, it, you, I know this breed. This is like our sixth Labrador. Only one of these is ours, but they're energetic and they're friendly and they need a lot of exercise. So I can describe them. I can describe the benefit of who, you, why you would want a Labrador, and I can tell you the kind of people that would get a Labrador and the kind of people that should never get a Labrador. So it's a similar thing, like you all have dogs, you know, or cats. You know why you brought this mammal into your, into your house and you know how they will fit. Same thing for your project. So when you're building the plan, um, you, you now know what you're going to do. Now you're going to build out the plan for communicating out your open source project. The first thing I always want to say is you just have to start. Like, just do something. Um, don't, you don't have to build out this grand old plan. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to sit there and outline, this is what we're going to do for emails and campaigns and social media. You just, what, what's, the ma what's the biggest thing that's going to have impact? for your project right now. Do you have a big event coming up? Um, you know, like an event like this. So uh, what do you want to do at an event like this or even the KubeCon coming up in a couple days here? What do you want to do at those events that's going to help your, your project? So think about that impactful thing. What are you going to do post-event? What kind of emails are you going to do? What kind of touch uh, communications are you going to do? What are, going, what are those most impactful things? Write them down, execute them, and continue to build your plan. So tying it back to a puppy, um, you can teach them the most impactful things, sit, stay. Um, I live in Arizona. Leave it is a big one for us, so that you know, I teach her to leave the rattlesnake and the really disgusting toads that are poisonous. Um, or you get to teach them a super fun little trick, like. Uh, this is actually my grand Labrador. This dog is picking a coin up off the table and giving it back. So we're going to continue. This is, a, this is a, one of those um, parts of your marketing plan that are a little more advanced. This little skill here on this Labrador is a little more advanced. And you will be adding those to your plan. Write it down, save it in your shared doc, and before you know it, you have a full marketing plan. 
So I'm going to cover just a couple, I'm going to go a little deeper into a couple things within your plan. There's a ton of things you're going to do with an open source project. I'm going to cover events and community. Um, I mean, I could cover branding, I can cover email campaigns, all of those. But I, I just picked these two that I'm going to cover today. And when you're doing an event, know what, know what your goals are for that event. Like, why, are you, why did you come, you know, Sousa Rancher, why are you here sponsoring Rejects? Why are all any of you that are going out to KubeCon and participating in the Project Pavilion or as a sponsor, what are you hoping to accomplish? And some of those things most likely are awareness that you have a project. Uh, you want to find users. Users are going to try it um, and in, in, in increase your adoption. You're going to want to engage with the community, maybe to find those partnerships. And you're, a lot of times you're going to events to talk to your existing users. Find out, get some product feedback. How are they liking it? How's the experience? How can I keep you using the project? How can I make this better? So that's a couple ideas of reasons that you would do an event. Um, with, with the dog, what kind of things am I going to do with, what kind of things do I want to do with my puppy? I want to maybe have her sit nicely at a restaurant. I want her to maybe, you know, walk heel nicely with me. So. I know what it is that I want to do with her. This, again, we were in Arizona. It was a hot day, so she has her booties on. So we planned ahead. We knew what we were doing when we got to the event. What you can't see is the whole big bag of treats that keep her sitting there nicely and the little things on her paws to keep her feet from burning on the pavement. But coming back to your event, know what you're trying to get out of it. So some of the specific activities that you would do in an event, um, you're going to announce something, for example. You want to educate by, through demos and trying the project, talking to your users to get product feedback, community building. You know, as, as much as this inter, introvert in probably most of us is, we are going to get out there and we are going to talk with the community and building that community and, and talking about our project. We're going to build those relationships, and we're going to see what other new technologies are out there uh, to, to keep up with those trends and how they might help our project. But for the best practices, just kind of make this list of all these different things you can do. You don't have to do all of these, but mix it up and just try them and see how they work and uh, measure them and know what you want to do for your next event. So we're going to talk about the other, other part of your advocacy and community plan that I'm going to touch on in specifics is your community engagement. And with, when you think about a community engagement, I put them into these four pillars. Uh, one is content. And any time that you're going to engage with the community, you are going to be giving them something. It's not about them giving you anything. It's about you giving them something. And it's going to be in the form of high value content. And what is a high value content? Well, it's going to kind of depend on your community. I mean, it's going to be good how to's, it's going to be good demos, it's going to be short form, long form videos. But know what it, have, continue to build that, those content pieces that are going to help your community use your project as well as understand what it is and why it's important to them need to talk to your community. You need to have those conversations. And you're going to be doing that via your forums or your Slack and your Discord type things. Um, you're going to be doing it via social media, at events. Um, kind of have an idea of what you want to learn from your, from your community when you have those conversations. How was your download experience? Have you ever filed a support ticket? Did you ask a question on Slack? Have you, do, do we get back to you in timely? So think about those different conversations where you're asking them how it's going for them while you're getting information that you're going to bring back to your project. Um, you're going to engage with your community on all of those same platforms. Uh, and I guess uh, it's probably in my notes, but for don't start a forum unless you have resources to answer the questions on the forums, right? Don't, don't try to build a big Slack following or Discord following if you don't have the, the resources to be out there and interacting with the community. So there's a lot of ways you can engage. Know what those are and then make sure that you're resourced it and that you can continue doing that for your project. Um, the biggest thing that's going to turn people off is when, we, when they get ignored. They ask a question and they get ignored. 
Uh, and then the last part of your project are your rewards. And there are two types. There's intrinsic, which are shout outs, thank yous, social media shout outs, ha inviting somebody to come speak maybe. And then you, of course, have your uh, extrinsic rewards such as swag and t-shirts and things like that. And um, there is no, there's no right or wrong way to do rewards or really any of this. And I would say that one of the number one questions I get asked is, Kim, what's the one thing we can do to build our community? And there is not one thing you can do to build your community. It's a group of people and humans that are all very different. And you just have to tie it back to what are you hoping to get out of your project and how can you work with your community to make it a better experience for them? So through this, I'm trying to give you some ideas of things that you can do with your, with, to engage with your community. Um, and for the life of me, someone's going to have to read the notes. I don't know why I put a picture of the dog with a toy here. But um, uh, I think it's, um, yeah, no, I, I can't remember. But anyway, that's her baby. Uh, the important thing is, and I don't know if you can see this on this video, there is a rope here. They have this rope. It is And as these dogs are, will this go again? Let's see if this will loop again. Yep. Uh, as these dogs are all working together, that is what you are going to do with your community. You are going to get together and you're going to run in sync, you know, working together to be growing your open source project. And with that, that's all I got. Thank you. How'd I do on time? I have no idea. That's how'd I do on time? I you first... have enough time for questions. Oh, to okay. Questions. <laughs> it's unbelievable how people not asking questions. You get a free opportunity to ask questions. <laughs> okay. We have a question, so. Hi, Kim. Ed from Equinix. Hi. Um, I have a question about uh, open source projects. All of your examples were related to your dog. One typical uh, counter example is uh, open source projects are like herding cats. Um, can yeah. you, uh, the, the me I mean, metaphors go a long way, right? They, and um, there's, there's a sense of independence as opposed to um, following direction. Um, there's a sense that the group might split at some point and you'd have a fork in your project because things had gone a different way. And I just want to, you know, like riff on some aspect of dog behavior versus cat behavior <laughs> in open source projects. Oh, like when they run the r other way. Um, I have a big old conversation about whether to, whether to really put the air tag on the dog or not because she runs away. Um, and yes, so I do have an air tag on my dog <laughs> because uh, like open source projects, you, you, are, you are beholden to the community. You are beholden to the open source community and um, you can't make anybody, we can't make anybody do anything. And um, so with your open source project, it kind of, it comes back to that community building and engaging with them and letting them know this, this is what our view of the project is. This is why we think we're doing it. What, what this technology, how it's going to benefit the, the planet or the community or this industry. And this is why, how we think we're going to go about doing it. And um, the, actually, probably one of the number one things in building a community and what I have advised the big organizations when I went and worked for them is you got to let go of control. You, know, you got to let the community do what they're going to do. The best chance of the community doing what's in your vision is when you know what your vision is, coming back to your business strategy, you know what your project is doing and what you're hoping to accomplish, and then you communicate that. And then you will hope, have the best chance of everybody working together, the same direction as your vision as well. But then you also have to listen during your engagement, because somebody may just call you out and say your whole vision is wrong, right? Like the people who tell me, I, whether you use a shock collar or not, I'm not going to test judgment, but the people who tell me I should put a shock collar on my dog, and I'm like, no, I won't do that, right? So you, you always have somebody who will come and say something that isn't in line, and you need to be able to answer why, why that won't work for the project. Did I answer it? Great to see you again. 
So in the, um, uh, the, the parallel with the puppy, what's the equivalent of the CNCF and at what point is the right stage to put your puppy into the CNCF? Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, okay. If at all. I don't know. So let's see. Would putting my puppy in the CNCF would be like giving her back to Labrador Rescue to find her a new home because I can't take it anymore? Um, no. Um, how do you know when to give a... You know, that that's a really great question. Uh, and um, and I, as I've talked to some founders who have open source projects that are not in a foundation, um, so I, 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 for people who don't know me, I, I came from the CNCF, right? So I'm like, yeah, the projects are great in there. Uh, the, the foundation gives them a lot of support. Um, it, it has been a, a bunch of years since I've been gone, so I, I don't know if, uh, how much of that is still true. I do want to caveat that. But, you know, we really wanted to, we were growing projects. We were adding lots of projects into the foundation. We were providing them with support. I was... You know, I was part of the team that was helping them with their marketing and their branding and making sure they, you know, that the person was doing the stickers. This was like a pre-Amy when I was there. And so there were a lot of benefits to getting your project in there and getting that awareness. Um, the, what I can't answer because I haven't dug into enough is with some of the founders who have open source projects and don't want to donate them. And so I don't, I don't have an answer, but I'll tell you what, when I get that, I'll write a blog on it and I'll let you know. Unless anybody has any, anything they want to share with the audience on why you would not donate your project. Save it for happy hour. Yeah, save it for happy hour, yeah. That's a great question, and uh, yeah. Any more questions? Other than that, I learned a lot about the CNCF and the animal shelter and the uh, picture of the dog with the prey in the mouth that was it his uh, puppet or what was it um it it's a stuffed snow leopard that she had de-stuffed he hunted it really down <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it <Okay. laughs> and thanks kim and yeah um, thank you all for the next talk thanks <laughs>